part of the coach is that he need to analyze the play which has been played by the opposite team am i right or wrong he need to analyze it yes he need to see yes. the play of the opposite team and how they are going to play uh, in the field how they are going to uh, like uh, uh, have some different uh, type of shots in a game how they are going to make the player confused opposite player confused so all these analytics should be observed by the coach of a team okay so in order to analyze uh, such a soccer game and he need to get some inputs for his team so is that only how many number of goals that the opposite team has scored is that only enough no sir no right no sir okay so the number of goals the opposite team has scored in the previous match that information is not at all sufficient for a coach to explain his team how to play how to play opposite to that specific team so i have shown you only so uh, some set of uh, observations you can see only you can see only some set of observations how the opposite team players confuse the players the other team players so this is also a point so uh, to analyze any game like this the coach should have to take all the points into consideration and if i see this example we can you can see that we have taken some uh, part some outcomes of this soccer game like number of goals they have scored the number of shots directly they have hit onto the goal the number of corner kicks the number of direct shots the number of fouls they have uh, acquired so uh, in case if i want to add how uh, the number of times the players have confused the other team players the number of times he has used his leg uh, differently so that the uh, it uh, uh, hurts the other players so like this you can take infinite number of outcomes in such a soccer game to analyze the opposite team game you have to take so many outcomes i have shown you only some number of outcomes got my point till now yes sir. Yes, sir. yes sir we can't know how many number of goals they score we can't know directly until unless the game is finished we can't say how many number of shots they are going to play directly onto the goal what is their plan uh, we can't say how many number of uh, direct shots they can hit onto the goal right so this soccer game now i am going to treat this as a random experiment because i don't know the number of outcomes or i don't know what are the different outcomes and the number of outcomes on the screen i have shown you only some set of possible outcomes that you can see okay now talking about the random variable now if i take this uh, as an experiment uh, as a random experiment you can observe that i can define a random variable here can you see i am writing x here near the goal yes sir yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. now here now here i can define a random variable x which is going to represent the number of goals which are going to occur in that specific game number of goals how many we don't know right that is a number right and now yes. here this goals is the outcome from this soccer game and here i have already told you that the random variable will definitely map the outcomes onto a real number scale am i right so yes. this random variable will be mapping the outcomes onto a real number scale okay for suppose here i have defined a new random variable y which is going to consider this outcome that is corner kicks and again that random variable y will be 
mapping that specific possible outcome of number of corner kicks on a real number scale. Can you see that mapping? Yes, yes sir. Right? Yes, sir. Similarly, I can do, I can define any number of random variables, x, y. I can define a random variable z here for the number of shots that are being played directly onto the goal. I can I can define a random variable p for number of fouls that uh, the team has uh, experienced in the game. So like this, we can define any number of random variables depending on the number of possible outcomes in such a random experiment. What I have taken here as a soccer game. Now uh, I I hope you are clear with respect to random variable. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir. The only thing is, random variable is going to map the outcomes onto a real number scale. So this is what I want to tell you. The random variable is going to perform mapping of the possible outcomes of this experiment onto your real number scale. Uh, I have taken this example of tossing a coin five times. So we have so many outcomes for this. And some of these I have shown you here. Like five times I can get a tail. Or, or the outcome may be four times consecutively I get a tail and I get one head. Or there is a possibility of all the five times I get a head on the face of the coin. Now here uh, I am going to the other slide directly. Now, now can you see here the random variable x here is counting the number of heads. I have defined a random variable which is going to count the number of heads. Got my point? Now, how many number of possible outcomes are there here? Two power, two power five. five. This you know. Okay. Two. Two yeah, power because five. we have tossed that coins five times. So the number of possible outcomes will be 32. And here I am showing only some of them, right? This three dots indicates the remaining all, remaining 29. So you can see that this outcome, there are no heads. Therefore, the real number zero is assigned to that outcome. Next, see this. Here we have four tails and I have one head here. Therefore, this number one is assigned to this outcome, right? And here I can see two heads. So the number two is assigned to this outcome and so on. Uh, that depends on the number of uh, heads what we have. And if I can take the last outcome where I can have all the heads, then the number five will be assigned to this possible outcome. So now here I can talk about the range. Now in this experiment, the range of that random variable is starting from 0, 1, and it goes till 5. Can I have a range value of 6 in this experiment? No, sir. No, no sir. No, right? There is no possibility of 6 heads because I have tossed the coin only 5 times. Yes. So that is how we can define the range of a specific random variable. So I'm, I can skip some slides. It's okay in between if you under, if you can understand. So we have also seen some uh, three examples. Like I have tossed a coin 100 times and the random variable X is now counting the number of heads. Now in that case, it is very similar to the previous experiment where I have tossed only five times. Therefore, uh, in that case of five times, I have observed the range is from 0 to 5. Now here I have tossed 100 times and the possible number of outcomes will be 2. In this case it is 2 power of 5 whereas in this case it is 2 power 100. Am I right or wrong? The possible outcomes. Yes sir. Yes sir. 
So therefore, yes, the range is defined like this: zero in the sense, all the hundred times I got a tail. Hundred in the sense, all the hundred times, all the hundred times I got heads. Right? I got heads. Am I right or wrong? In case if this is the outcome, I mean, if this is the range, then I can say that among these hundred times, I have wow. got only one head. Remaining one all head. are tails. So like this, this is this has now become countable. Am I right? This has now become countable. Yes, so therefore, sir. This is an example for a discrete random variable because it is countable. Similarly, I have shown you one more experiment. that i toss a coin until the first head appears now i have no limit for the number of tosses i need to toss the coin until i get a first head then i will stop then you can observe the there is no limit for the outcome here why there is no limit because this is a random experiment i don't know when a head appears zero indicates that Zero indicates that zero. There, is no, uh, there is no head. Right? There is no head. One indicates that one head. One head. Right. That means the uh, we have got a one head appeared uh, in the number of tosses. What what I have, and here you observe that this is talking about the toss. first toss second toss got my point for yes, the second sir. toss i got a head if i see 3 that means for the third time i toss the coin i got a head like this i can have a range here it is also countable and this is discrete and you can observe one more experiment that uh, the random variable t now it is now t i have Set it as t. It is defined as the time in hours from now, assuming that t equal to zero has started just now, until the next earthquake occurs. Do you know when an earthquake occurs? Because it is a natural calamity, we yes, can't sir. expect when an earthquake occurs. Even though the city is said to be having uh, occurring uh, severe earthquakes in that city, for suppose, I don't know when an earthquake occurs. So therefore, we observe that. the range of that specific random variable if it starts from 0 0 is a finite value therefore i have shown a closed brace and maybe after some long duration the earthquake may occur so that long duration is now represented as infinity and since that infinity is not a finite value i have just closed that mean uh, i have represented here an open brace got my point so this is how i can define a range for a random variable okay and this representation you all know uh, i represent random variable with a capital alphabet i represent the elements of the random variable with a small alphabet and this random variable will be a function of a sample space outcomes because uh, these outcomes of the sample space or random experiment are been mapped onto the real scale so obviously random variable will be definitely a function of a the element of the sample space so we have seen here one example which uh, these examples are given in your textbook so i have quoted here in your class so here uh, we are uh, we have a coin we have a die we have a fair coin we have a fair die and we are doing this experiment that is we are throwing the die and tossing the coin at the same time now what are the possible outcomes so two outcomes for coin are head and tail whereas die we have six, six outcomes number 1 to number 6 now we have some combinations here like i may have tails on the coin and i may have uh, on the die the number may vary am i right or wrong so these are yes. some set of combinations and for suppose i may have the combinations like this so therefore totally we have 12 possible outcomes for this random experiment okay r e means random experiment okay now here you can observe that this x what i can show here is a uh, 
random variable. Can you see that here? X. Yes. Sir. X here, right? And can you see the real number scale here? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, so, sir. So the mapping of a random variable, it is it it is up to you, right? It is up to you. It is depending on uh, the application we use. Here you can observe all the uh, outcomes here with respect to heads and the numbers on the die are mapped directly onto the numbers on which the die has been showing. You can see here H comma one is mapped to one, H comma two is mapped to two, and so on. H comma six is mapped to six. That is up to you, right? Mapping is up to you. Next, you can see here on the left hand side, if you see these outcomes with respect to tails, he is saying that he is going to map the same random variable when we when he observe such outcomes with respect to tail. When he when he say that it is t comma one, then he is going to map with a negative of the number double the number on the die. That means t comma one will be mapped to minus two. T comma two will be mapped to minus four. T comma uh, three is mapped to minus six, and so on. T comma six is mapped to minus twelve. So mapping is up to you. Finally, mapping is done onto the real number scale only. So this is a you can define your own random variable depending on the random experiment. You can have your own mapping. Okay, uh, if I uh, take the example of uh, the tossing the coin earlier, like tossing coin five times. I can map that random variable x double the number. I have got the heads. For suppose I have got a single head and all five tails, then I can map that onto a real number two. It's okay. That is up to you, right? So uh, this is a, an experiment where I can spin a wheel. I can have the outcome varying from 0 to 12 and here I have defined a random variable such that whatever the number that is showing on the scale is being squared. Then the range of that random variable is from 0 to 0 square to 12 square. So therefore it varies from 0 to 144. So like this random variable is taking birth from the outcomes of the random experiment. And the mapping of that random experiment depends on the application where you are going to define that random variable. Okay, is, is that clear till now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And since yes. we observe that here, S can take any value in between 0 to 12. We have infinite, infinite number of samples, right? So here, this is a continuous random variable. So depending on the outcomes of the sample space, we say it as a discrete random variable or we say it as a continuous random variable. Uh, some more points I can mention, like I have discussed about discrete random variable. Continuous mix of uh, discrete and continuous. So I'm going to skip all these slides. I'm now directly going to the probability distribution and density functions. Okay. Is that clear now till random variable? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now uh, see this uh, probability. Now here we have discussed in this set of slides probability distribution function and probability density function. Now we have taken the same example of tossing a coin, but here tossing three coins, not three times. It is three coins and we are observing the outcome on the face of the three coins. And here I have defined a random variable from this random experiment. That is how many number of heads I observe on the face of the coin. Now, since I have three coins here, the total number of possible outcomes are two power of three. That is eight possible eight. outcomes. And I have represented all the eight possible outcomes here as a sample space, right? So here you can observe in the first outcome, I have three heads. In the second outcome, second possible outcome, I have only two heads. 
like this different numbers are mapped to the specific outcome you can see that for suppose for suppose here i have defined x counting the number of heads for suppose i have defined uh, a random variable y counting the number of tails let me let me let me count tails so in that case here what is the number with respect to y zero because i have no tails one here it is one it is one it is two it is one again it is two it is two it is three right yes right so therefore uh, in this case of x i have this as a range for x similarly here also i have the same range for this random variable y got it see here i can i can yes. have the random variable counting number of heads or some other person may count a tail so random variable or uh, definition of a random variable that depends on the application whether he needs a head or he needs a tail got it so i can define any different types of random variables even even for suppose uh, i can define a random variable z okay uh, uh, which have uh, only two heads and one tail two heads and one tail okay i have defined a random variable which is going to count among these three coins two heads and one tail now tell me i'm going to uh, clear this erase this so i am now asking you there is i have defined a random variable z where among these three coins i should observe two heads and one tail whatever may be the order i don't want about the order i need to see two heads and one tail now among these so is this the possible outcome Right. Yes, sir. What are order? Order may be different. Yes, sir. Okay, order may differ. So, is this outcome? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is this outcome? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all, right? Yes. Sir. Okay. So therefore, this random variable z is going to map only these three outcomes on a real number scale. Got it? and it is going to neglect these outcomes am i right it will not consider the remaining outcomes it is going to consider only these three outcomes so defining a specific random variable is depending on the application we need got it so now i'm talking about this random variable here you can easily say that taking a ran random variable taking a value of 0 means this is the only possibility and among these eight i have only one so the probability will be 1 by 8 it is clear i i hope this you can easily understand the number of ones we have we have three possibilities among eight so it is 3 by 8 similarly random variable taking a value of two value means this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so it is again 3 by 8 and random variable taking a value of 3 means there is only one possibility among eight outcomes so therefore it is 1 by 8 so this means that probability that random variable takes a value of small x so these are the elements of these are the elements of the random variable represented by small x so if small x is equal to 0 the probability is 1 by 8 if small x equal to 1 small x means element of a random variable if small x equal to 2 it is 3 by 8 x equal to 3 it is 1 by 8 so i can represent the range of that random variable in case if in the in the form of a formula i can represent like this am i right where the elements of that random variable are represented with a small x and taking that specific value what we say it as a probability mass function so this is a probability mass function 
when random variable value x is 0 this is a probability mass function value when the random variable takes a value of 1 and so on till this point clear yes sir yes now now we have to uh, i'm i'm directly going into the uh, plot i hope so you can easily understand now now here I will show you directly the two plots. Yeah. In this plot, you can see both probability density function and the cumulative distribution function. Now, let me take an example. You can see here one example where the probability mass functions are given. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, how many values that this random variable takes? One, five two, three, four, and five, right? Yes, sir. This is one, two, three, four. Totally five values this random variable can take. And what are those values? Minus one, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 1.5, and three. These are the only five values a random variable can take. And this table has been given directly. So what is the random experiment? We don't have information. Just I have this table that I have a random variable which has only five values and the respective probabilities are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. First, suppose, is there any problem given for you? First, you have to check whether the sum of all the probabilities is equal to one. Until and unless they are equal to one, uh, that will not become a good probability model. So you can check here. The sum of all these will be equal to one. Now this is a good probability model. Now plotting the distribution function, you can see cumulative distribution function. Cumulative means we observe addition. OK, now the first probability value is 0 0.51 and that should appear on an X scale at minus one. You can see here I have minus one and I have represented the amplitude of 0 0.1 can you see here on the uh, can you can you follow my mouse pointer yes sir. yes sir. or i can show the uh, spotlight sir, can you increase the cursor size yeah i'll show the uh, now can you can you see this uh, spotlight yes sir yes yeah? sir red yes. color yeah red color spot you can see the spotlight now uh, if you can observe here at minus 1 I have the amplitude of 0 0.1, right? This is 0 0.1. And until unless I reach the next value of this X, that is minus 0 0.5, that probability will remain constant because probability will not change until it reaches minus 0 0.5. And now here I have already told you that it is cumulative. Am I right or wrong? It is cumulative. So therefore, we observe that from this reference scale, you can observe from this reference scale of X, you have total cumulative probability as three. Can you see that? Can you see that? 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, it is 0 0.3. Can you see that? Yes, yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. But here, we need to represent the step size only with a probability of 0 0.2. From the reference, it is cumulative. So therefore, it is 0 0.2. And that 0 0.2 probability will maintain constant until unless it reaches the next value of the random variable that is 0 0.7. So once it reaches 0 0.7, the probability is 0 0.1. So therefore I have represented 0 0.1 here. And that remains constant till it reaches the next value of X that is 1.5. And at 1.5, you observe the probability as 0 0.4. So you observe the step size is 0 0.4. Now, talking about this word cumulative, what is the height of this step from the reference? You can see that. 0 0.8. Right? 0 0.8. 0 0.8. How did you get that 0 0.8? By adding all these respective previous probabilities, what right? Am I right or wrong? You will reach a maximum of one because I am taking the sum of probabilities and the limit will for the sum of probabilities will be one. Got it? So this is a plot of probability di distribution function or 
cumulative distribution function. Now I am showing you the next plot you can see below. This is simply I can say plotting the probability mass function. So these are the these are the probability mass functions. Am I right? Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. At yes, the respective yes, value sir. of x, right? So density means it is simply plotting the mass functions at the respective values of x. You can see that 0 0.1 here, the probability mass function when x takes a value of minus 1. This is 0 0.2. 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and so on. Now, I will show you uh, once again this Plinko probability. Do you, do you remember this? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. What is the time now? 10.40, we have 10 more minutes. Okay, so if I simulate this for suppose, so you can see that uh, total number of balls, you can see here total number of balls, N is increasing. I hope it is 100. Just let, let us wait to complete. Okay, it is 100. Now, you can see that uh, in this first vessel, what is the uh, number of balls count? Zero, sir. Zero. Second one? Zero. Second Zero. one? Zero. Third one? Two. Third one? Two. Two. Two, right? Yes, Fourth sir. one? It is seven. Seven. Right? Now, can you see the count here? Blue light? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, I will try to plot here. One second. I will take a page. Uh, one second. Yeah, now I can use my pen, I hope so. All ah, right, so uh, if you can see here, uh, I can plot the histogram with respect to this probability. Okay, so this x-axis is representing bin, right? It is starting from bin 0 to bin 12, okay? Can you see that at the bottom? Yes, sir. Bin 0 yes, to sir. bin 12. Yes, sir. And this y axis is representing number of balls that are being dropped onto the bins. And so on. Now, uh, at, in ball, uh, in this 0, there is 0. Bin 1, 0. Bin 2, the count is 2. Bin 3, the count seven. is 7. Bin 4, the count is? 14. 14. So, total number of balls are 100. Am I right? Yes, sir. Right? The plot I am showing you here is called as histogram. Okay? The plot here I am showing you simply the bins versus the number of balls. We call it as a histogram. Now, can you tell me what is the probability of getting balls into the uh, zeroth bin? Probability means number of balls by total number of balls. Zero by zero. 100, right? Zero. Yes, sir. First bin? Zero, sir. Zero by 100, zero. right? Two by 100, one by 50. Second bin? Two by 100. Third bin? Seven by 100. Seven by 100. Next one, put in by 100. Next bin, 19 by 100. Next bin, 19 by 100. 22 by 100. 16 by 100. Next bin, 14, 14 by 100. 4 by 100. 2 by 100. And again, zeros. Yes. So, here, pointing or representing directly the bins versus the number of balls is called as histogram. Whereas, instead of this, like instead of this count, if I can represent the probabilities like 0 by 100 here, 
0 by 100 here, 2 by 100 here, 7 by 100 here, 14 by 100 here, 19 by 100 here and so on. That becomes your probability density function. Got it now? Got it now or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's directly yes. representing the density of balls in that. And here we are representing the probability density. Therefore, we say it as a probability density function. Got it now? Is that clear? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I need to erase all this. Yeah. Documents where we are. Somewhere here, I think. Got it now? Simply representing or plotting the respective probability values. It is what I am talking about the probability density function. So this is for uh, you can see this is for spinning the wheel. Continuous. Continuous. Okay. Right. And I hope you you understood this point. Uh, that that we can understand yes. this one. Here. Uh, all these points. I'm going back. Yeah. So here, can you see these points? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, sir. Can you see the same numbers yes, here sir. at the bottom? Yes, sir. Okay. So these points are representing the values of random variable. And at this value, do, can you say that it is a constant? Probability is constant. Yes, Can you say yes, that here on this line? No. Yes. It is varying from 0 level to 0 0.11 level. It is varying. Okay. Similarly, at this point, can you see that the probability is constant here? No, sir. No, it is varying from 0 0.1 level to 0 0.2 level. So, mm. therefore, whatever the points I am showing here, as a circle, can you see the circles? Yes, sir. So on at these points, the probability is not constant. It is varying. Therefore, we call those points as points of discontinuities. OK, where the signal, the probability value is varying from one level to another level. Now, for suppose, can what are these values? Is that a constant? Yes, sir. Is yes, this a constant? Sir. Yes, sir. Is this a constant? Yes, is this sir. A constant? Yeah. So, if you can observe that in the PDF, I have point 0.1 here. I have point 0.2 here. Here I have again 0 0.1. Here I have 0 0.4. Here I have 0 0.2. In between, I have not plotted anything. That means I am performing the operation of differentiation. Differentiation of a constant is becoming zero. Can you can you observe? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And differentiating the unit step function will give an impulse with some specific magnitude which have already been given. So therefore, the relation between the cumulative distribution function and the probability density function is that PDF is obtained by differentiating the cumulative distribution function or cumulative distribution function is obtained by integrating PDF, the reverse uh, uh, result, what we can understand. I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip all the properties that you can easily see and verify. Yeah, in this, this time, 49. Okay. I hope we have uh, uh, completed this Gaussian, right? I hope we have yes, completed sir. Gaussian. Yes, so the only, yes. the only thing, the only one point I want to mention is for a random experiment, depending on the outcomes, I can define a random variable. See, see this, right? Based on some random experiment, from those outcomes, 
I can define a random variable and I can plot the probability density function of a random variable. And if that probability density function is in the form of a bell curve, then this random variable will be said as Gaussian random variable. Got my point? Got my point or not? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Yes. When a random variable PDF probability density function, if it is in the shape of a bell curve like this, then that random variable is being said as Gaussian random variable. Generally, for natural occurrences, random natural occurrences, right? Such outcomes I can consider for Gaussian. The question is that when I should consider the Gaussian random variable or when I should consider the Gaussian PDF for random natural occurrences, I generally go for Gaussian. Okay. Uh, am I clear till now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. This is this is all mathematical representation or mathematical representation of the Gaussian function. That's all. The don't worry about all this. This is simply the Gaussian function mathematical representation. That's all. If you vary this value, obviously you will get a bell shaped curve. Now, the second distribution function I have told you is binomial. Binomial in the sense we have only two possible outcomes. This also I have told you. So whenever I am talking about a random experiment. Yeah. Whenever I am talking about some random experiments which has only two outcomes. I have I have told you these examples. Right. Either head or not a head. Hitting the target or missing the target. Passing or failing an exam. In, in, in case I am talking about a computer bit stream because it can understand only zeros and ones. Therefore, whether it, the received bit is a zero or a one or winning a game or losing a game. So if I have only such cases of success or failure, then I will talk about binomial distribution function. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, I, I hope all your uh, doubts are clarified in this revision session. OK. Yes, sir. Right. So yes, sir. Uh, I will directly go to the last slide. Uh, please don't mind. Uh, it is 1052. OK, I, I, I hope I have given you some work here in this slide in the last class. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. And here we have some values. Can you see that? You have some values here. Yes, sir. How did you got those values? That is completely on depending on this n equal to six and the probability P of A. And all these values are obtained here. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In this, yes, I sir. have substituted n equal to six. And this probability of success, P of A, probability of success as 0 0.25. That's all. I have got those values. Got it now? So make use of this expression. Take n equal to six. Take P equal to 0 0.5. Check whether you have got these values for those respective n equal to 0 to 6. OK. This is simply the probability mass function. Plot of probability mass function for n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2 till n equal to 6. Next, next is the plot for cumulative distribution function. So simply here, as per the discussion, the first is 0 
next it remains constant till it reaches 1 and here it is 0. Point, the height is 0. 0.3650 it remains constant till at this point and here it is 0. 0.2966 it remains constant till this point this is 0. 0.1318 it remains constant till the next value it is 0. 0.0330 remains constant till the next value 0. 0.0044 remains constant till the next value and it reaches 1 and settles down and this value is 0. 0.0002 sum of all these will be equal to 1 because all those are respecting are representing the probability mass functions and sum of all the possible probability mass functions will be definitely equal to 1.